Hello everyone, welcome to Accounting for Income Taxes. This is Anne Marie Anderson and this is going to be my guess at least three videos for this chapter. Accounting for income taxes isn't quite as simple as taking taxable income and multiplying it by a tax rate, which to date is maybe all you've seen. Um, there's actually a lot more going on behind the scenes. So that's what we're going to be looking at today with deferred tax assets, deferred tax liabilities, um, NOL carry forwards, not carry back so much. We'll talk about that when we get there. Um, but let's, let's talk first about what the reason is for these tax differences. Now, accounting income it does not necessarily, and most often not, equal taxable income. Um, accounting income or accounting income tax that you would recognize on your financial statement is designed for financial statement users. However, for the tax for IRS, for actual tax that gets paid out, the calculation is often a bit different. So most of the differences tend to be temporary, but we'll talk about some permanent differences as well. But temporary is really where we're going to be fo where we're going to be focusing because that is what leads to deferred tax assets and liabilities. Okay, so temporary differences arise, as it says, when pre-tax accounting income and taxable income are recognized in different periods. Um, and we'll get into some examples of that as we go through. Let me give you a couple of examples here, but I'd rather wait a bit. Um, but at the, the, at the end of the day, the idea is, is taxable income different than accounting income? If so, you have to determine, is it due to a temporary difference or a permanent difference? And if it is due to a temporary difference, that's when we start, well, that's when we start considering deferred tax assets and liabilities. Uh, the temporary difference is reverse, meaning that maybe something is taxable in one period, uh, let's say 2000 and 17. Something is taxable in 2017, but it's not on the financial statements in 2017. But then in 2018, maybe it is on the financial statements, but it's not taxable because it was taxed in the previous year. Okay, so that's the idea is that they reverse in one or more subsequent periods. Okay, so um, this is pretty much what I've been saying. Uh, what The way I kind of like to think about it is I think about a deferred tax liability means that I am going to owe money in the future, um, meaning that my financial in my financial income was greater than my taxable income. So my financial statement income is greater than my taxable income. So if you think about it, you have not paid the tax on something yet that you did have on your financial statement. So let's just put some words around it. Let's say I had hundred thousand dollars worth of income that was on my financial statements but I did not have to pay tax on it yet but I will have to pay tax on it in the future that generates a tax liability deferred tax liability because you basically put the taxes off to a future period now on the flip side let's say your financial accounting income is less than your taxable income meaning that you paid the taxes on it already all right you paid the taxes on the income now and you're not going to report it uh, on your financial statements until later. So because you've almost paid your taxes in advance, you have a deferred tax asset on your books. So it's kind of a hard concept to get your head wrapped around. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples as we go through um, about what you could think of as a deferred tax asset versus tax liability with things that you've already seen. Um, when we do a calculate tax expense, this is my favorite word here, it's going to be a plug. And we'll once we get into the numbers, I'll show you how that works as well. All right. So one thing about this chapter is I hate the slides. <laughs> and what I mean by I hate the slides is there is so much going on on every one of these slides. It's overwhelming. It was overwhelming for me to review them in order to do this for you. Um, the previous editions of the book had much simpler slides and, you know, the illustrations every number wasn't calculated on a slide. It was just, this is, a t they're all a tad overwhelming. So pause it, take your time, work your way through it for each one of these as we go. I mean, I'm going to do my best to break it down, but even for me, opening up some of these slides was like, whoa. <laughs> all right. So let's look at this one, deferred tax liability. Um, 
Kent Land manage, Management reported pre-tax accounting income in 2016, 17, 18, 100 million. Okay, so you've got pre-tax accounting income of 100 million in 16, 17, 18. What? Oh, plus additional 2016 income of 40 million from installment sales of property. Okay, so we've got 40 million. However, the installment sale income is reported on the tax return when collected in 2017, 2018. Okay, so we have a timing difference here. If you think about it, for financial statement purposes, we made the sale. Sale is done. Now, when we receive the cash isn't really relevant to when we recognize the revenue, right? So we recognize all 140 million, the 100 million of regular income and the 40 million from the installment sales. Um, we recognize that right away in the financial accounting uh, statements. However, we don't recognize it until we receive the cash for tax purposes, right? And we're not going to get the cash until 10 million here in 2017, another 30 million there in 2018. So here's our timing difference, right? We are going to wind up in the position of a deferred tax liability because we're basically paying the taxes later. All right, so I hope that makes sense. So what we're showing here, and this is very similar to all, the way all the grids are going to look for, throughout this chapter, is it's showing you the income. This is the uh, this is the item causing a temporary difference, right? So you kind of pull it out, and you see the balancing going on over here. So at the end of the day, yes, you recognize the same amount of money, regardless of whether you do financial statement income or um, taxable income on the tax return, 340, 340. It's just about the timing, right? 100 million here, 110, 130. Okay, and that's what this is all about. Okay, another slide that makes you go, whoa, but they're very similar throughout the rest of the chapter, so once you get used to the format, it won't be so bad. All right, so here we go. Here's our current year, 2016, right? 140 million, here's the 40 million, or 40, yeah, million, um, in installment income. So we've got 100 million of tax on the return, all right? So we're only looking at 2016 right now. What does the journal entry look like to record this because what we've got in this situation is we've got 40 million here of a temporary difference. Now that 40 million at the tax rate, and the tax rate must have been on the previous slide of 40%, generates, um, oh no, wait, sorry, 40 million of 40% generates a $16 million uh, t deferred tax liability. Okay, so this difference here, this 40 million that's going to be the difference at a rate of 40%, I know it doesn't actually play the, well, it shows it over here, 40 million of 40% generates a $16 million difference, all right, uh, in taxes. Because remember, the, this is all whole dollars, and then you have to apply the tax rates to them. Okay, so let's take this apart a little bit. The first step in any one of these problems is coming up with the actual income taxes payable. Well, Taxable income on the tax return is $100 million. There's no if, ands, or buts. That, that's what it is, $100 million. At 40% gives you $40, $40 million of taxes payable. So the first thing you do is you come in here and you do the income tax payable, $40 million. This debit here, the income tax expense, is the last piece, all right? So don't even pay attention to that yet. First piece, come up with the actual taxes payable, $40 million. And then look at that temporary difference. In this case, we have the $40 million. We are paying, we're recognizing on the financial statement income. Um, the financial statement income is greater than the taxable income. So that gives us a deferred tax liability. Basically, we're paying taxes later. All right, so you've got the $40 million um, at a 40% rate. That's the difference here. Gives you $16 million in taxes you're going to pay in the future on this income. So, Here's a new T account. Here's our deferred tax liability, right? Obviously, it's a liability, so it's going to be on the credit side. And you've got a $16 million deferred tax liability here, okay? This income, now you've got the income tax payable, deferred tax liability, and the final piece is income tax expense. And that's going to be a debit for you, and that is going to be a plug, all right? You are going to plug whatever you need to to make that journal entry balance. All right, so hopefully it made sense. Okay, another over overwhelming screen. This is now how do we use it? How does it, um, how do we, what does 2017 and 2018 look like? Okay, so let me just go back for a second to the previous slide. We have 10 million that we are going to get um, of income from the sale, like actual cash. So 10 million at 40% would be 4 million, right? So you're going to, oops, wrong way. You are going to reduce that deferred tax liability that you set up before you to $16 million deferred tax liability by the $4 million that is that offset there. 
Okay, income tax payable is the math, the same as it was before, 110 times 40%. I'll go back again. Oops, too far. 110, so every year is 100 million. Sorry, I'd have to go back two slides, right? 110 million. Every year they make 100 million. So 100 million, 100 million. 110 million at 40% is going to be your income tax payable, right? That's the first piece, 110 million at 40%. And the deferred tax liability is going to be that 10 million at 40 percent so you're almost you, you're you're knocking down the liability the taxes that you're going to owe here you had owed 16 million on the full 40 and now you're knocking it down because you collected 10 of it all right so now we go and income tax expense simply a plug now we move over here to this journal entry and you're looking at you've got 12 million as your beginning balance right from the previous ending balance and you're collecting 30 million dollars well 30 million at at 40 percent is 12 million dollars here you go and income tax payable simply cal calculated as 130 million at 40 percent and that was from here 130 million i know the hundred isn't here but they just didn't show it they were only showing the differences but they did say in the first screen every year they make 100 million dollars so 130 million dollars at 40 percent there we go is 52 so you come up with this calculation you come up with this calculation and income tax expense is the plug all right, so that's a lot to absorb. You may have to rewind me and listen to me a few times over again here. What it looked like, though, is here's your deferred tax liability account. You had nothing in the beginning. Then you had your $16 million that you set up because you knew you owed the money, right? You, you know that you have pushed the taxes off to future tax periods, which making it a liability. And then in 2017, you basically paid in $4 million in taxes, and then you paid another $12 million in on taxes on that, on the extra money. So at the end of three years, you owe nobody anything. You're done. All right, so let's do this little concept check. I'm not doing it the right way. Um, I'm not in slideshow mode, so basically we have the answers, which is not how I would recommend you do this, but I have the answers at the same time as we go have the question. So we'll look at this very quickly. Shortly before the end of 2016, Coulter Co Company makes an installment sale that generates $400 of before-tax income. Coulter recognizes income for accounting purposes when the sale is made, but will recognize income for tax purposes when cash is subsequently collected in 2017. Coulter has a tax rate of 40%. Okay, as a result of this transaction, Coulter's tax expense journal entry would include a, well, it's $400, $400 million of installment sale income, right? So you know you're in a deferred tax liability situation because you're paying the taxes later. 400 million at 40% generates 160 million tax deferred tax liability. And they didn't give you any information about the tax payable piece of it in here. Okay, so that's all you need to know. Here's your credit to deferred tax liability and your debit to tax expense, which is always a plug. All right, the second one, and then I'm going to pause this. All right, um, Windsor Company started 2016 with a deferred tax liability of $150. Okay, so we're starting off with a deferred tax liability, and this is an important one. As of the end of the period, Windsor identifies future taxable amounts of $500. Um, Windsor has a tax rate of 40%. Okay, so we start off with $150, but, we just, but at the end of the year, they think they're going to have future taxable amounts of $500,000. Well, $500,000 at 40% is $200,000. All right, so now instead of $150,000 of deferred tax liability, they want to have 200000 in deferred tax liability. I know I'm saying thousands. You know what? It doesn't even say that. $200 of deferred tax liability. So 500 at 40% is 200 So what they need is they need a journal entry to get them from the 150 in here to the 200 over here, which means you're going to add another 50 to that deferred tax liability right here. Um, taxes payable. Where is that coming from? Uh, calculates taxes payable. Oh, they told you. And calculates taxes payable will be 120. So tax expense would be 170. Okay, so if you already have an amount in here and you know what you want your ending amount to be, that final journal entry for deferred tax assets or liabilities might be the adjustment to get there. So it's almost like an adjusting journal entry. All right. Okay, um, so I am going to pause this and start another one. See you in a minute.